recording. There we go. So um, today I want to start laying on our backs. Um, to anyone that is not here today in the live Zoom and watching the recording, happy Thanksgiving. Um, I got, I'm so thankful for everybody that um, joins my classes. So thank you so much. Um, so yeah, we're going to start laying on our backs or seated. Yeah, you can choose. You can choose actually if you want to start seated or laying down. I'm feeling tired today, so you might want to lay down. But I'm going to start seated just so it's easier for me to talk to y'all. We'll close the eyes. If you're laying on your back, maybe place your hands onto your body somewhere or along your sides. And take this time to slowly, gradually arrive into your space. Welcoming in the breath, as well as letting go of the breath once you get to full capacity. And as you breathe, slowly starting to relax the face, the ears and jaw. everywhere else from head to toe. I'm just breathing naturally. The breath might slow down little by little, but just allowing the breath to do its own thing. Just sitting or laying and observing every sensation that's going on in the body or the mind. Also noticing any sounds or sensations around you, around the room. Just stepping into your awareness. Thanksgiving this week is always a week with the theme of gratitude, which is an obvious one. We do that one every year. But what's beautiful is that us yogis, in this, anyway, in this specific class, we practice gratitude every week. Because gratitude, or also known as the daily practice of gratitude is as said, a daily practice. But maybe this week, even though we're always grateful every week, maybe thinking of a couple extra things, maybe going a little bit deeper just soak into the feelings of whatever things you're thinking about that you're grateful for and just take a couple breaths just to focus on the sensations and feelings from thinking about all the things that you're grateful for.
Start to just briefly let go of what you're grateful for for now, setting them aside for later, and return back to noticing the breath. And take on your own, take three big breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth on your own. Once you exhale, that third exhale, start to slowly open the eyes to look down in front of you or up at the ceiling. And if you're seated, go ahead and come to your back. <laughs> um, what we're gonna do first is we're going to warm up our glute men and our glute med because I'd like to work on those two muscles for our future pose, because we're going to come into tree pose eventually as our peak pose. And also we're going to strengthen those muscles as our knee stabilizers as well. They're just one of the knee stabilizers. So we're going to lay on one side. And I think we've done this before, maybe months and months ago in person. Um, but we're going to lay on our side and stack the knees together. And you can rest your head onto your hand or your arm. And you're just going to stack the knees and just keep the feet together and slowly open and close the knees. And we're gonna do about 10, 10 or 15 or so, just as many as you can do until you feel the warmth start to build. And again, we're warming up these muscles, because when we come to our tree pose, this muscle, one of, many muscles are used, but this muscle is used to help externally rotate the leg and help keep it balanced. And we're also using these muscles to stabilize our knee joints, because this is one of the muscles that we use to stabilize. So I think that's about good. Take one or two more just for good luck. Awesome. And we're going to stay here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to adjust the knees. So we're going to just scoot your knees so that as if you were kneeling on the floor. So what it's going to look like laying down is it's going to look like the knees are directly under the hips as you lay down. So you'll scoot the feet back quite a bit so that you can get the knees somewhat aligned under the hips so the feet come more behind you. And we're going to do the same thing. And this one activates a different part of the glute, which we will need for later. So take it nice and slow, go at your own pace. It shouldn't be too vigorous <laughs> of an exercise. It's a very subtle exercise. Take just a couple more. I'm already feeling it quite warmed up here. Good, and take one more for good luck. And good, and then we're going to rest. We're gonna straighten the leg beneath you so that underneath leg, whichever leg you're, whatever side you're laying on will straighten. And this knee will stay bent, you can either Keep it here, or you might reach back for your clothing, or maybe you might reach for the foot. If you have um, a handy dandy strap or belt with you, you could try to hook it here. Maybe pause the video if you're watching the recording. And we're just going to stretch that top of the thigh, stretch the quad, the hip flexors. Possibly if you want more resistance, you might even press the foot into the hand if you grabbed the foot, but no worries if you're holding on to clothing or if you just have the knee bent here and floating. Awesome, we'll release the foot 
And for you, you're just going to roll over to your other side. Um, I'm going to scoot over to this side so I can still face you guys. So go ahead and roll over to the opposite side. We're going to do the same thing again. Kind of a boring exercise, but we're going to get through this one so we can get to our more fun poses. So stack the knees in front of you, rest the head onto somewhere comfortable. Ooh, it takes me a while to flip over. <laughs> and we're going to open and close, keep the feet together. And take just a couple of these. And now's a good time when we're doing kind of the tedious little exercise like this to come back to the gratitude. Good. Take one more. And we're going to start to readjust for the second part, part two. Scooting the knees under the hips as if you were kneeling down on the floor. Yeah, just the best you can, doesn't have to be perfect. And we'll take that exercise again. Stabilizing our glute need and our glute men. Yeah, don't forget to breathe. Gonna yeah, take one more. And then rest, we'll straighten the underneath leg onto the mat. And you'll either bend the knee and hold it in the air, or you might reach back and grab clothing or maybe the foot. If you want to, if you grabbed the foot and you need more, press it into the hand. Otherwise, just relax. Yeah, or again, you can use your strap or belt or towel to wrap around the foot if you would like to if you are feeling like you really need the stretch, but today's not the day to reach the foot, you can always watch the recording and pause. It's the beauty, that's, that's the one silver lining of um, doing these classes virtual is that there is a recording option. I, I know it's not for everybody, but um, it is really nice to be able to go back if there's a specific routine you liked or um, if you missed a day. Yeah, and we're going to release the leg and we're going to come on to our backs. And we're going to split the knees out to either side. Soles of the feet come together like you're in your butterfly pose or butterfly position. And we're going to take that core warm up that we did last week and I'm going to do it again today. We're going to reach the arms up overhead. We're going to take a big breath in. And as you exhale, we're going to curl by lifting the head, bring the hands into prayer, lift the feet and reach the hands in prayer towards your toes as you exhale. And inhale, feet come down, arms reach up. Exhale, curl and round, reach hands towards the feet. And take a couple more, try to maybe do 10. My cat is watching me from the couch and she's going, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> Who makes this stuff up? I didn't make this up. <laughs> and use your breath to guide your movement. Take, maybe take three more if possible or rest if you're done. 
Inhaling to lengthen, exhaling to curl around. Good. If you're still with us, I'm going to do one more. Good. We're going to find a full body stretch. Legs reach out long. Arms reach up alongside the ears. Nice long stretch. Good. We'll hug the knees in together. And if you want, you can rock side to side. And then eventually, however you want to get there, come to tabletop. If, if you want to rock, if you want to roll, rock and roll, whatever you want to do. <laughs> awesome. Find tabletop. See if this angle will still work. Yes, perfect. <clears throat> Take some cat cows. Maybe holding um, cow pose might feel nice after doing that core warm up. Take just a few more, maybe two or three more. <clears throat> Excuse me. Stay hydrated. <clears throat> and we're going to keep your left hand planted. Make sure to check in with the weight distribution of your left hand. Five fingers are spread wide. The weight is pressed into the whole hand, especially the fingers and the pads and tips of the fingers. We're going to kickstand your left foot out to the left side a little bit for stability. And then we're gonna to come to our side plank or a modified side plank. We're gonna reach, this arm's cut off, but this arm's just reaching straight up to the sky. Palm is facing forward in the same direction the heart is facing. Good. Find a stable variation of this pose by you know, kickstanding this foot any amount and coming to the inner edge of the right foot. Reach with the tips of the right fingers as if you're holding on to a rope and it's pulling you up towards the ceiling and the left hand is nice and stable. Yeah. And then if possible, we're gonna lift this right leg and come to a modified half moon pose. So if you're having trouble with balance, then you have the ability to come back down and then come back when you're ready. Some of us might be a little bit more moving, lifting it up and back down. Others might be able to hold. Um, once, I'm just gonna scoot this way so you can see my foot. Once you lift the foot, rotate so that the toes point in the same direction as the heart. Flex your foot as if you're standing on the floor and press through the sole of the foot as if, again, you're pressing onto the floor, standing straight up. Good, three more breaths here. You can also look in any direction. You can look down, straight ahead, or up to the sky. One more breath. Good, we'll bring the foot down to rest if it's not already. Both hands come forward, both knees to the mat, and we'll sink back into child's pose. Take a couple breaths onto your mat.
take one more breath to prepare. Then we'll inhale, come on up back to tabletop. We'll stabilize your right hand, spreading the fingers wide, get the weight even. Kickstand the right knee. Um, I didn't mention on the last side, if you need a blanket or anything under your knee, I'm sure you probably already accommodated for that. But again, just a reminder, if you need a, something squishy under the knee, go ahead and grab that. Kickstand the foot if needed, come to the inner edge of the left foot and come to your modified side plank when you're ready. Doesn't matter which direction you look, as long as your neck is happy with where, what direction you chose. Good. And then we're gonna start to practice our half moon again. So first flex your left foot or whatever top foot is you are using for this side. Flex it. Spread the toes. And then when you're ready, lift it up. Imagine that you are about to swim like the side stroke in a swimming pool and you're using this leg to push off. So I'll scoot forward again so you can see my foot is very flexed. And we'll take three breaths here now that we're here. Again, you can come back down anytime. We're just practicing, not performing. So just allow yourself to just practice. Good, one last breath. Then we'll place that foot back down if it's not already. Both hands come forward both knees to the mat, child's pose. And take another breath to prepare. <clears throat> and then we will rise back up to all fours, hands and knees. We're going to reach the right arm up to the sky. And then exhale, we're going to thread the needle, slide it through behind the left. Take three to five breaths here. One more breath, prepare to come back up. The next inhale, come all the way back up. Reach the right arm up to the sky. And we're gonna find that modified side plank again, coming to the inner edge of that back foot. And then with the top arm, we're gonna start to reach back any amount, twisting your heart up to the sky, opening up that right pectoral muscle Good. And stay where you are. We're going to rotate the arm up alongside the ear and add a nice side body stretch. Awesome. Both hands come forward again, both knees. Left arm reaches up to prepare. And it will exhale when you're ready. Thread the needle. I'm just throwing in some shoulders while we're here. Focus on the breath once you get settled. Good. 
is set up to prepare to come back up. Take another breath while you're here. Then take a big breath in to unthread the needle, reach the left arm back up to the sky, and we'll step your left foot to the back of the mat for that side plank variation again. And then any amount, reaching the arm back behind you, twisting your heart towards the ceiling. And then we're gonna stay here. We're gonna rotate to reach your left arm up alongside your ear to nice to add a nice stretch to the whole left side of the body. Next breath, both hands come forward, both knees come back. We're gonna curl the toes under and prepare for a down dog. And when you're ready to downward dog. Give yourself the freedom of whatever movements or non-movements you need to do and breathe. If you are resting at this particular moment, take a breath to prepare to come back to down dog. And we're going to start to tiptoe forward to your forward fold. Let the head relax. Remembering to just always be aware of what your body is telling you, what the meaning of yes feels like in your body, what no feels like in your body and adjusting accordingly. Let's inhale, lift halfway, either hands to mat, shins or knees. Exhale, fold back forward. Two more. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Soften your knees. Get ready to rise. Take a breath to prepare. Then on your inhale, we're going to sweep the arms up and up. Come to rise. And exhale, hands to heart. And we're going to come to our Tadasana. You know what to do here, reaching hands to either side. Find your Tadasana. <clears throat> a bad joke um, for Tadasana is you can, when you come up, come into it, you can go, ta-da, it's Tadasana. And there's my cat, she's gonna help us here. She's gonna be the mediator. She's gonna be um, the drill sergeant. We're gonna practice our tree pose. You don't really need to see my head for this anyway, so it's okay. We're going to find your Tadasana. Feet are hips width distance, hands are turning forward, shoulders draw down and back. And I invite you here to briefly close the eyes and just feel the movements of shifting your weight forward and back. Or weight's kind of not a fun word, is it? We'll just say gravitational pull. <laughs> We'll just move around, feel the gravitational pull until you find your center of stability. 
Good. We'll bring hands to your hips. Um, at this point, if you need a wall or anything or a chair, go ahead and use that. I'm going to start by, you can start either side. I'm going to start by balancing on my left leg. So I'm going to kickstand the right foot and I'm going to externally rotate the knee outward. And right away, we're going to, I can't think of words today. <laughs> we're going to um, use those muscles that we warmed up. So you're going to activate, that's the word I'm looking for. Activate the glute med, the glute min. Hands can stay at hips or hands to heart. And when you're ready, just practice your tree pose. That could be meaning that the balls of the feet or the toes might stay on the ground and just kick standing the heel onto the ankle. Or if you're feeling fancy, you might come up to the calf muscle. If you are really um, feeling pretty open in your hips and you do this one a lot, you might choose to come up to the inner thigh, but just please avoid going on directly onto the knee joints. We don't want to go onto the knee joint, especially since we were doing exercises to stabilize the knee. <laughs> so use, use your intuition here to figure out where else in the body needs to be engaged. So we already have the glutes engaged. We have the core, which we warmed up as well. So re-engage the core, draw the shoulders back. And I'll stop talking for a moment. Let's take a couple breaths and just practice street pose and come out whenever you need to, no big deal. Take another your breath, just practicing on this side, or if that standing foot is getting a little tired now. And when you're ready, try to gently place the foot back down and you can roll it out or shake it out. Oh yeah, I forgot actually, I wanted to warm up the ankles before we started. So, even though we didn't warm it up for the left side, let's warm up the right side as well. So we'll roll the ankle, shake it out, roll it out, and we'll roll it out again afterwards. Good. And if you want, bring hands to hips to start, and we'll get ready for the other side. So find your drishti. So we like to call in yoga, fancy word for focal point. If you're Feeling pretty unbalanced, the best focal point is to look right down at the floor, four or five feet in front of you. The more and more you practice the balancing, you can start to move your vocal point or drishti up and up. Um, a challenge, if you want to challenge yourself, you can try to look up at the ceiling. Or the ultimate challenge, you can try to close your eyes. <laughs> So get ready and set up for this side. And when you're ready, just go ahead and start to practice this side if you haven't already started with me yapping away. Find that focal point, something that's stable, maybe just a little spot on the floor or looking at a stable piece of furniture in your home because we're all at home doing this together. Engage the core muscles reach upward through the crown of the head. And if you want, you can change variations with the arms and breathe. So many things to do at once, but once you feel stable, return back to that breath. And if you start to feel wobbly, 
that's okay because we're not trees, we're people. <laughs> and trees sway in the wind when it gets windy. Take another breath or two on this side if you are still practicing. And when you're ready, gently place the foot back down and roll it out or shake it out. And let's also roll the wrist too. Roll the wrist, maybe roll the arms if you want to make circles with the arms. And yeah, we'll roll all the joints actually. So just get goofy, roll out all the joints. Good, and while we're here, um, reach the arms out to either side and check for any objects or people or pets that might be in your direct vicinity. <laughs> and we're just going to twist gently. Don't twist too hard necessarily. Well, you know not to do that, but just some movements. Just swing the arms, twist side to side. And we'll come back to center. We will interlace the fingers and we will rotate so that the knuckles are facing you and the palms are facing away from you. And we're gonna lift it up overhead and we're gonna side bend. And inhale back to center and exhale side bend other side. And back to center and we'll roll the wrists all the way down to your sides. Roll the shoulders up and back. And then let's inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale, lift yourself halfway. Then exhale, plant the fingertips for a forward fold. I need to ask my camera woman here to set me back up. There we go. Forward folding. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, and we'll walk the feet back to downward dog. We'll inhale, come back forward, either to plank or knees down. Exhale, lower chaturanga all the way down. Inhale, open up the heart, any back bends. I'm going to come up to sphinx because that's what kind of mood I am in today, but if you want to take a um, full up dog or if you want to take cobra, take three breaths no matter which one. And we'll come down to rest. And if you'd like, go ahead and bend the knees and sway the feet side to side. Right. Stay here as long as you need to. We're going to come to child's pose. And you can slowly get there or you can come right into it if you're ready. Just pay attention to the back. If the low back is like, nope, then pause for a moment. Maybe take a puppy dog stretch before coming in. And when you're ready, child's pose. Take some nice big breaths onto the mat in front of you.
before you come out of your child's pose, I invite you to just come back to the gratitude. And again, it's funny because we always practice gratitude or contentment or also what we've learned about together, stantosha, which means daily practice of contentment. But maybe making this particular day a little bit extra special, maybe thinking a little bit deeper about maybe something other than what's around you. Maybe think of a couple things about yourself that you're grateful for. Because for me, my first instinct is to think of my cat, my home, my things, but maybe think about something different than you would normally think about. So take a few breaths here for that and we'll slowly come out when you're ready. Take another breath and slowly when you're ready, we're going to come onto our backs. Good. Come to your back and we're going to stretch those outer hip muscles that we warmed up. We're gonna cross the right ankle over the left knee and we'll hug it in close or you can keep it on the floor. And we'll stretch the outer hip, spread the toes, flex the feet. And once you come here, start to let the shoulders relax. Keep your legs as they are. Reach both arms out to either side and we'll let the legs come fall over to your left side because I have my right foot on top and possibly planting the sole of your foot onto the ground. You can hold on to it for stability, for support. Um, or if it's not quite right, you can uncross and just stack your knees. And wherever you want to turn the head and breathe. And also, just for fun, if you are looking for a little bit deeper of a stretch for the hip flexors, which is um, these muscles up front here that we use to, well, we use them for many things, but they get tight from sitting so much. So you might choose to take one of your hands, maybe your left hand, and bring it to the inner thigh or bring it to the inner edge of the knee. And just ever so gently, maybe an inch or so, press the knee away from your body. And that kind of adds a little bit of a different stretch. Just throwing that out there, not required. But if you'd like to try it and see how that feels, you can try that.
one more breath. And slowly bring your head back to center, knees back to center, and we'll rest. You can either keep both knees bent or straighten the legs. We're gonna bend your other knee, place the foot on the floor, and we'll cross the opposite leg. For me, it's my left over the knee. Stay here or lift it and hug it in. And find that stretch. Find the breath, find the stretch. See where you can soften in the body. Spread the toes. Pulling inward, if you decided to hug the knee in. And whether you're hugging the knee in or not, also pressing your left ankle and knee away from you into this right leg here. So there's that both resistance going on for both that pulling and pushing. We'll reach both arms out to either side and we'll let the legs fall and plant over to the right. Again, plant the sole of the foot <clears throat> if possible or stack the knees. Again, that same option is available if you want to experiment with it, which is again, optional. <laughs> so if you want you can take your maybe right hand, bring it to the inner thigh or the in, inner edge of your knee and gently press it away from you, maybe an inch or two. I'm just offering this variation too as an option for those of you that might have tight hip flexors as well, or if you just feel like this is the best version of the stretch for you or maybe the original version and just relaxing the arms or using your right hand to support your ankle or your knee. So we're opening up the hip, the glute, and we're also subtly twisting ever so slightly, twisting to help incorporate and promote blood flow for the lower organs, the digestive organs. Next breath, let's come back to center. And taking any last other movements that you want to end your practice with, if you want to take a full body stretch from here or bend the knees and windshield wiper them side to side, like what I'm doing, <clears throat> or a happy baby pose or anything else, whatever you want to end with whatever uh, feels good naturally from this previous pose.
then we're going to set up for Shavasana. So you can stay here on your back, or if you're feeling like you need to change to a different surface to lay on, go ahead. And we'll set up for Shavasana. So closing the eyes. Taking a breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. <clears throat> and start to feel the weight of your head being supported by whatever surface you're laying on. <clears throat> Feeling the shoulders draw down and back towards the surface. <clears throat> Feeling your back, the whole posterior of your body supported beneath you. Letting the legs relax, let the legs fall to either side naturally. And start to just let go of this particular day. Let go of any expectations, letting go of past, letting go of the future, <clears throat> reeling yourself in to this current moment of reflection and a time for your body and your mind to process everything that we just did. Letting go of the perception of having to have a clear mind in Shavasana, being aware that our thoughts will come in and out of the mind no matter what but reminding ourselves that thoughts are just thoughts they're not reality our thoughts are a made-up belief in our head that we were either taught to learn or conditioned to believe so just reminding yourself of being in this moment and just accepting your breath in and out. Shavasana.
slowly, <laughs> slowly take a big breath in and out on your own. Bringing yourself back to your breath. Start to wiggle fingers and toes. Circling wrists and ankles and starting to lay onto one side comfortably. Reflect briefly on all of the things that you thought of during this practice that you're grateful for. And slowly start to come up to seated. With your hands in prayer position in front of your heart, breathing in and out through the nose. And I ask you here silently to yourself, how does it feel to be you right now in this very moment? Thank you so much. I'm thankful for all of you. Namaste.